the following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. And guess what? It's not John Logan. It's Larry Pesavento setting in for John Logan. John is still recovering. He should be back on Monday, God willing. And I'm sure she is. Okay. Anyway, um, what I thought I would do today is, uh, since we've got some time to uh, go through a lot of this, I'll give you my ideas of why I think the market had that pretty good bottom in there when we completed all those ABCDs. But before we did that, I wanted to uh, give you an idea of, you know, my uh, journey or evolution, you know, as a pattern, recogni uh, pattern recognition uh, swing trader, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, just to give you an idea how I got to the point where I am right now. But uh, I start out but with this first chart that uh, the uh, you'll see it's the Australian dollar on an hourly chart. And I, I mark these uh, spots there where we've had, uh, you know, where market makes a marginal new high by just a very, very small amount uh, on the top and then also on the bottom. Uh, that's a double bottom. You know, watch that. You know, it, this is where people usually make their mistakes and where stops get a bad name because people put their stops right under the previous lows. And what you should do is give it a little bit of room, at least, uh, you know, I would think 20 pips or several hundred dollars, whatever it happens to be. That's the easiest way to do it. But how I got to this chart was interesting because I was in uh, Frank, um, excuse me, I was in uh, Munich uh, giving a speech. Uh, to a group of uh, folks from uh, Frankfurt and Munich. Uh, I had just completed the book, uh, Astro Cycles, A Trader's Viewpoint, but it was not published yet. It was still in publication. And I had written a couple articles in some magazines about uh, some Astro stuff with uh, uh, Venus Uranus and stuff like that and some pattern recognition things. And I was invited to go and speak uh, to these uh, banker types over in Germany. And so it was an evening class, uh, 7 to 10. And it was free. No one had. Oh no, it was fifty dollars. I think they had to pay fifty dollars, uh, is what it was. And uh, so I got up to speak, and um, I was in the end of my speech about maybe two minutes, and I happened to mention something about the the uh, full moon. It was February of um, eighty six, I believe. I yeah, it was 80, February of eighty six. Yeah, yeah, that February of eighty six. No wait. It was February of eighty seven. Excuse me, it's February of eighty seven, and. Um, as soon as I said the word full moon, uh, the people, there are about 10 people, there are about 55, 60 people in the class, and about 10 or 15 people just got up and headed for the door. And I told the, 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 but the people that invited me, I said, lock the door. I said, don't let these folks out. I said, uh, tell me what's going on. They were all speaking German. And they said, well, they don't want to listen to this stuff about the astrology stuff. And I said, look, I said, we go through the whole thing. If they don't like what they hear after three hours, give them their money back. And of course, these people were panicked that I would say something like that, but they actually stayed. And uh, we, uh, we ended up doing another seminar uh, two weeks later where we had 25 of these folks where we did live trading for three days. We did a um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday live trading seminar where we guaranteed that we would make money. Uh, during those days, and it was it was an interesting um, thing to happen too. But we'll go into that another time. But what I wanted to do was to go over this chart here. After I left um, Germany, I, I went to Switzerland. I went to Jur uh, Zurich to speak for the Bank Loy, uh, and they had about 30 bankers there. And uh, during the time I was there for four days, I was trading, and uh, I had an interesting experience because. 
Over a period of about uh, three days in there, I was getting stopped out at the absolute high or low uh, of the market. And I, I wasn't silly enough, you know, to put my stop under the, uh, you know, right under the old lows. I gave myself a little bit of room, but the room is what got me. I was getting stopped out right at the high. And um, I was fooling around with my um, calculator there in the room. And uh, I noticed I kept seeing this number 1.27. And uh, it wasn't until about five months later when I met Bryce Gilmore that he explained to me the relationships of 1.27 and 786 and all the square roots of the numbers and stuff like that. So the lesson here is when you're, when you're into this market like this is to watch where you are you know, where your stops are. You don't want to put them where everybody else is. You know, give yourself a little bit of room. If you think it's a double bottom or you think it's a double top, you know, that's really what uh, what you want to try to do. I found it to be very, very helpful. Now, we have a couple of... Um, we have a couple of trades that look real interesting this morning, whether they're going to work or not. You know, we never know whether they're going to work or not. But uh, we have a um, real interesting pattern that is forming in the silver market. Uh, it's got a chance here. Well, that's all I can say. It's just a chance. As long as we can stay above 1450 uh, in the silver, uh, we've got a chance for uh, silver for a pretty good run here. we got a perfect uh, uh, ABCD pattern coming in. Uh, it's exactly at the 61% retracement of the low we made back on the 11th, and it's at the 50% level of the low we made back on the 26th of September. That's all we can say about it. But you've got perfect symmetry there. Uh, everything is lined up for it to move. The $64 question is whether it's going to do it or not. It's only a probability. It's never a certainty. And that's the main reason why we're, why we're looking at that. And we'll see what's... Uh, see what's looking we have a let me let me cover this uh, uh mr z is asking a question about treasury bonds and i'll cover that uh in just a minute but i wanted to get into the gold to show you the same thing that we have uh going on in gold because gold hit this uh hit this number uh, spot on just a little while, well, about an hour or so ago down at the 1120 area. We got down to 1119. I think we're trading at 1121 or something like that right now. But here it's the same thing. But the pattern in the silver is far more, um, uh, it's this exact 618, of course, but it's, uh, and we took out the lows of last week, which is also good. And, uh, but it's, it's the same situation in silver, but silver is much more uh, harmonic. I mean, you can just see it uh, all over the chart, all the things, you know, that are there. We'll see what's uh, going out, but we'll, we'll just have to wait to see, uh, to see what's going on, uh, you know, with the silver. Now, Mr. Z asked a question. We were chatting yesterday in the room uh, about the uh, Treasury bonds because, uh, oh, here they are, just a second here. And this is the same chart we had on yesterday, and I'll just bring it up and show you what we were looking at here. This was one of the reasons we were looking for a possible, you know, turn in the stock market, too, because uh, the bonds are, you know, they're much bigger than the stock market. And if you'll notice, we had two major numbers going up there at that 158.05, which happened to be the high of the day yesterday, and the 1.618 of that move was 158.10. There's an, here's an example of the same type of thing that if you were going to put a stop in, you know, you don't want to put your stop in at 158.12. You've got to put your stop in about 10 pips higher than that, about 158.22, somewhere in that ballpark to make sure that it can get through it. And sometimes that'll happen and you'll just get stopped out. But don't put it at 158.11. You know, that's that's uh, that's not very, very bright. I mean, that's uh, that's what we call a fool's folly, I would think. What's amazing, though, is, that, you know, the bonds have not come off very much considering they've only came off about a point and a half. You know, considering how much the stocks are up, you know, the Dow up 200 points and the other things moving good. But that's what we're looking at here uh, in the uh, in the bonds yesterday. That's all it was, was a uh, really nice uh, ABCD three drive to a top pattern. And uh, that was giving us an indication that the market, the stock market was probably nearer bottom than uh, a top. And the other thing we were, of course, we talked about was the um 
relationship of what the VIX was doing because, you know, the VIX was really uh, not not really uh, telling. We were an inside day yesterday during this big move down. Uh, well, the big move down was only in the NASDAQ. The S&P was hardly down on the day, and the Dow was uh, hardly ever down on the day except for the last uh, half hour, and then it came roaring back. So uh, that was telling you the market was certainly a lot stronger. And, you know, we're into a rally, and we could get all the way. We talked about this. this we could get all the way up to uh, 1918 easily uh, in the uh, in the S&P 500. And uh, I think we could get as high as um, 144.90 or something, or one, something, whatever it is, whatever that handle is. One, I guess it would be 145, 144.90. Uh, into that, and we'll see. We'll see what uh, uh, to see what happens. So we'll 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 figure that out a little bit later. But that's basically what we're looking at. Okay, let's just take a look at uh, what happened yesterday. Uh, first of all, we'll we'll take a look at the breath because uh, the breath did the same thing. It just looks horrible. Nothing uh, nothing has changed there. Um, it's certainly not anything that uh, you know would make us say that wow, there's a potential bottom in this area. That's for sure. It doesn't look like that would be the case uh, at all. All right, now the first one we're going to look at here is the. Um, hold on one second here. I want to get the uh, Nasdaq one first, I believe. Oh, I put these in order, and then when I get them in order, I can't. Ah, here they are right here. They're right here on top. Here's what we were looking at yesterday as the market was making its bottom down here. Uh, we were hitting a perfect ABCD pattern uh, going back from September the 17th when we had the mercury going retrograde. Then we came down. We rallied up to a 50% retracement, and that ABCD measured down to 40-50. And uh, we could rally all the way up to, uh, you know, 141.75 uh, to 142. That's, uh, you know, three or four handle, three, three or four hundred points uh, in the NASDAQ and still do, doing the same thing that it was doing between the 24th and the 25th, you know, where we rallied uh, 250 points. Uh, in the NASDAQ in one day, and then the next day, of course, it gave it back. So the overall market, you know, still is bearish. This is a snapback rally uh, in a bear market after completing an ABCD pattern. Uh, that's the way it looks to me. Uh, I, don't, I don't see anything different to, to change my mind. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange Index actually uh, looked a little better than the, uh, the overall market for the first time in quite a while. And uh, I'll show you this one here because it did not, um, it went down and matched that low. Uh, it didn't quite match the low, whereas the NASDAQ took that low out by just a hair. Uh, we didn't do that in the New York Stock Exchange Index. But, you know, it didn't bounce very much either because it was the late late market rally that did this. And that's the thing that, uh, you know, made the... Um, you know, made the situation work. Uh, we have a question about these expansion numbers that I use. Um, folks, my, my whole premise of pattern recognition is based on the fact that the market repeats itself uh, over and over again every day. It never does anything any different. It doesn't do the same thing every day, but it does exactly the same thing. In other words, there's chaos within the market, but within that chaos are these non-random patterns that repeat over and over again. Dr. Andrew Lowe in his book, The Non-Random Walk Down Wall Street, has proven this beyond a shadow of a doubt. Anyway, this is going to take a little break here, and we'll be right back. This is Larry Pesavento sitting in for John Logan. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS 
has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. This is uh, Larry Pesavento sitting in for uh, John Logan. Uh, we were talking about uh, expansion numbers and stuff. And what I've done is I've posted into the uh, room here, uh, the Tiger Room, the uh, long-term weekly chart on the Canadian dollar. Because as you can see, uh, we have some real serious numbers up here at this 134 uh, in change level. Now, the first uh, uh, last week, we hit 134.17, which was the exact number. Uh, then the market uh, proceeded to sell off 130 pips over $1,300. But since that time, we've gone up and we've made another higher high. Well, that higher high was nothing more than a 1.27 expansion of that 130-point move down. In other words, it came down 130, went up 170 to make a new high at the 1.27 and then backed off to come back below it again. So what that tells me is this market is trying to make a, a top up in this area. It's not going to get the exact price that we wanted, but it should be close 
close to it uh, over the next few days. So we've made a secondary high. So most probably what will happen to the Canadian dollar is we'll have one more high uh, taking us up to maybe close to 135. Uh, and the reason why uh, that is happening, we had the first one at 134.17, the second one at 134.40 uh, and change, and the next one should be 134.60 to 70, I believe. And that's what we would be uh, looking at to see what's uh, see what's going uh, see what's going to happen. Uh, we just had gold make a new uh, low on the day here just a few minutes ago. We went below the fib point now by a dollar. Now whether that well dollar and a half. So whether that's going to mean anything or not, we'll wait and see. But the pattern and everything is correct in it. Uh, whether it makes money or not, uh, it's 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 the pattern. That's all it is in the gold, and then also that's all it is in the silver. Uh, also, everything I'm looking at is patterns, folks. It has nothing to do with uh, the fundamentals or, or any of those things. I gave up on the fundamentals during the uh, October 1974 crash when I, uh, you know, bailed out and lost a great deal of money as I was buying things all the way down from July to the early part of October before the market finally had its crash. That's when the Dow went from 1,000. Uh, it topped in 1972 at around 1,060 in the Dow and then it went sideways for about oh, a year and then it went down for about a year uh, into October 74 then it double bottomed in uh, December of 1974 and and that was one of the, the keys of why I got into astrology is because on the October uh, low we had a multiple conjunctions and oppositions of the major planets and then the same thing occurred uh, four months later with a different set of planets giving me conjunctions and oppositions and then uh, Dr. Miller, Dr. Ruth Miller who got me started into this real heavily you know uh, was able to show me that this event happened more often than not at major highs and lows and we saw that in 1987 big time with the uh, harmonic convergence and we also saw it in the um, uh, 19, uh, 2009 bottom when, you know, all the planets were lined up in, uh, you know, two houses uh, with all the conjunctions and oppositions that we had. But at that time, you know, the market was setting exactly at the 61% uh, retracement, too, of the low from 1982. That was a really amazing um uh, really amazing hit because if you look at that August uh, 9th of 1982 low to the high of 1987 on uh, August the 25th, that number at 1,660 something in the Dow Jones was spot on. I mean, it wasn't off by more than a, a quarter of 1%. That's how accurate it was. And then the next day on the 20th of October, it made a slightly lower low by oh, a, a point or two. And then, then it started to go up and it went sideways for a good three or four months before, you know, we were able, it was six or seven months before we were able to take out the old high at 2,750 in the Dow on our way to uh, 18,000. But what we've got here uh, in the market here is uh, this is a good snapback rally. We, this is not unexpected for sure, but uh, this is the kind of thing that you want to, you know, sort of keep an eye on because it's a very important um uh, rally that we're having here because you know maybe I'm totally wrong and maybe this thing's going to take off and this was a major bottom but uh, it, none of the things that I look at will tell me that I mean uh, the only way that I can say that this is a major bottom is if we take out the highs we made you know way back on the 17th of September when we hit that uh, was it 20 uh, whatever the day was that the Fed was in yeah it was a Fed day uh, September 17th when the S&P ran up to uh, 2000 and and, uh, 12 or 2015 something like that if we took that out then I would say yeah all this is wrong and we're probably going to go higher but I don't see any evidence of that right now so 877-927-6648 this is Larry Pesavento for John Logan trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights 
Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you and your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <sighs> okay, folks, so we've got um, Larry Pesavento setting in for uh, John Logan this morning. Uh, John should be back with us, I believe, uh, on uh, Monday. He's recovering from um, emergency surgery from an appendectomy, which I all remember too well. Uh, we had some good information from our friend John Murphy, um, one of the masters of technical stuff. And uh, I would like to share some of these charts with you because I think they're very valuable. Gives an idea of, you know, where some serious money uh, is going. This happens to be uh, the relationship between um, the high yield uh, corporate bond shares and the energy sector. Uh, as you can see, there's a very, very high correlation. Uh, as a matter of fact, he, he mentions in there for the last 26 weeks, it's been, uh, it's been very, very positive. 
positive. And as you can see from the energy spider, uh, we're also completing a big ABCD pattern down there in the XLE. That was another reason to believe that, you know, we could possibly in, be in for a good bounce here. And, uh, you know, that's all it'll be. But, you know, you'll have to wait and see, you know, what the what the bounce is, uh, is going to be. But uh, John is the master of looking at uh, various uh, technicals within the market, uh, you know, especially uh, when they make comparison things. And the next one that I want to uh, bring to your attention here is a comparison of the um, stocks uh, versus corporate bonds. And you can see here also uh, this this is a very, very strong correlation between the two. But they have a tendency, you know, to go down uh, together. You can see October, uh, October 11th of uh, of uh, 2011, when we had the big correction, we had the big correction in uh, in the corporate bond uh, market also. So these are the things that you want to re remember that these can go uh, together. We saw this from our good friend Todd Gordon, and uh, he was uh, he was kind enough to share us the same type of chart pattern. But this was also uh, furnished to us by John Murphy, and he's showing the same type of thing of uh, what we're looking at uh, in the market right now. What's really surprising to me is the fact that the Treasury bonds did not sell off very much, uh, considering that the Dow has rallied uh, 300 and some points off the bottom. Uh, that's uh, really an amazing thing. And we're, we're still within one point of the high in Treasury bonds. That That's a real, uh, uh, an amazing feat, in my opinion. But we'll see whether this is going to uh, continue or not. But uh, we're having increased volatility. And as we've said long time ago, this is going to keep going and going and going and it's just a matter of uh, you know when uh, this whole thing you know gets ready to uh, be blown out of the water and we go down you know big time which I think we we'll eventually we eventually will now the, the last one that um, that I have from uh, John Murphy is the uh, the, the relationship of uh, investment grade corporates and treasuries and high yield bonds and which are basically junk bonds. And as you can see, the red line uh, on this chart is the junk bonds, and it is by far the weakest, which it should, because you can see the black line, which is treasuries, there should be a flight to quality when the market, you know, starts to sell off. Well, remember, the, our market really topped on uh, May the uh, 19th uh, when we had Mercury retrograde and the new moon. Uh, the, the NASDAQ topped uh, th about three or four weeks later, but the overall market with the New York Stock Exchange Index, that's where uh, that bottomed. And so that's when this whole thing really started to, to become uh, unwound a little bit. You can see there in early June when everything really starts to come down, you know, that's when we were really, uh, you know, moving to the downside. But the technical picture uh, is still, you know, quite bearish, but we are in the midst of a pretty good bounce here. And it could uh, last for, you know, a lot longer for sure. We just don't know, uh, you know, what it's going to do. We'll just have to uh, to wait and see. But this is showing you the interrelationships of uh, different things. And this is one of the specialties that John Murphy uh, covers. He's written several books about this. Uh, he's wrote the book about technical analysis, which was basically uh, an expansion and an, an incredible improvement over Edwards and McGee. And um, this was Edwards and McGee was the standard of our business for many years. And uh, John Murphy was uh, fortunate enough to make this uh, book uh, uh, add a lot to it and, you know, and, and much more sophistication because now we, we had a lot more computer power. You know, John's uh, about my age. And when we started this, you know, we didn't have computers. You know, we had a little hand handheld Texas instrument calculator. I, I had one, but I didn't know how to use it. And I certainly don't know how to use a computer. Computer, but we really didn't have the computers until 1983 when we started getting desktops and uh, stuff like that where we could, you know, actually see our charts. And, and that was helpful by CompuTrack, which was uh, Tim Slater out of New Orleans. And then later on, we had um, Epson Computer was big at that time. They're no longer in business, but uh, that's how it all started to un unfold. And, you know, and then when I started trading, I meant, I meant to say this yesterday, but uh, Folks, in January of 1965, I was in San Luis Obispo, California, in the midst of a 
terrible rainstorm. It was raining so hard that the creek outside of the uh, office there was uh, for Walston and Company was uh, almost overflowing. I mean, it, they hadn't seen that much water in that creek. Uh, and um, the guest, uh, one of the one of the man not one of the managers, one of the owners of Walston and Company, was in the office uh, that week visiting some friends that he had in San Francisco, and he stopped by the office and uh, spent the day with us. Well, this man's name was H. Ross Perot, and I got to meet him. And that day was a very, very significant day in the market because the New York Stock Exchange set a record of 5 million shares that day uh, going across the tape. They do that much in Intel in the first 15 minutes. <laughs> so that's just the difference of uh, what uh, what went on. So, you know, later on, Perot uh, was a candidate for uh, president. I don't remember which one. I guess it was against uh, Hoover or um, Hamilton. I don't know which one it was. But anyway, uh, he was a really nice guy. He's an old cowboy from um, from Texas, and he's had this the drawl and the whole bit. But he's a really nice fellow, and he certainly was a uh, an incredible financial fellow because he uh, he really uh, he really understood the markets, uh, you know, very very much. But anyway, we've gone from five million shares a day to billions of shares a day, and so that just tells us, you know, these computers we we rely on them so very much. And 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 I had one other thing I wanted to mention to you. I got a notice in the mail. Uh, from Wells Fargo that I have died. Uh, they, it was a very, very uh, official-looking um, uh, letter. And I took it to the bank, and sure enough, they, 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 they don't know where they got the information, but they said that I had passed away. I had to go in and prove to them I was alive, which is no easy task at my age. But uh, after going through a, uh, you know, taking my temperature and my pulse and asking a few simple questions, I was uh, able to, uh, you know, make it through. But anyway, um, be careful with all the scams that are out there, folks. These folks are so good at what they do that it is really, really dangerous. In fact, that's what happened with this Wells Fargo thing. It was, in fact, a scam. And um, I was a little concerned about that because I don't think they would have contacted me in that way. But uh, anyway, that needs, that's neither here nor there. Just be really careful. There's a lot of stuff going on out there, which you already know that. The web is not a – it's a very dangerous, sinister place for most people, as we uh, already know. And so we've got to be able to, uh, you know, handle it as we, as we go through here. Okay. Now – we had a question about Apple. Um, uh, I don't really have a stock for Apple today, uh, but it basically is, uh, you know, we sold off quite a bit given the fact that there's supposed to be a, a new phone coming out from Google that uh, not only will it do everything that the Apple will do, but help drive your car and cook your food and other stuff too. I don't know exactly what it'll do, but um, it's evidently it's enough that scared some of the Apple holders yesterday whether they'll continue to, to see things on the downside or not you know we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see but that's uh, neither here nor there we'll have to wait uh, to see how the jury comes out on this we uh, the market's going to open here in about an hour and well about 45 minutes I guess and we'll get an idea if we're going to have one of these days where we run up 350 or 400 points we've already rallied over 300 and uh, 300 and some points from uh, late yesterday afternoon so we'll see if that's going to be uh, well, if that's going to be uh, anything uh, to hang on. But every time we've had one of these big, sharp, uh, sharp openings, either down or up, that's usually, you know, the wrong thing to do. And I, I certainly have to agree with that because it's an emotional part of the day. Uh, when that is all happening, and so you got to be able to, uh, you know, set back and get your uh, bearings straight, and then see what's happening. But we've got some resistance points. Uh, in the in in the S and P uh, the S and P futures that comes in at um, 1917. Uh, I believe that's a 382 down from the whole move. It's a big A B C D pattern. It's a 61 percent retracement from the uh, pattern back off of our last high. So there would be a lot of resistance. I would come whether we make that today or not. I don't know, but we might make it tomorrow. Uh, you know, and this is the last day of the month. And if you remember. The last two days of the month and the first three days of the month are the most positive days uh, of, on the calendar, and that's mainly because of the uh, 
mutual funds, you know, they put their money to work on the last few days of the month or the first few days of the month. And then uh, those are the very most, the, the, the positive up days are just, uh, it's just really amazing. I don't know if you folks realize this, but if you went back and looked at every single day in the stock market since we've had good data, which is about 18... 1875, about 10 years after the Civil War, we started getting pretty good data from the New York Times uh, and uh, the Philadelphia Inquirer, I believe, uh, where they would put uh, the prices of the stocks into the newspaper. And uh, if, if you, if you want to see how random the market really is, there has been almost exactly the same number of up days as there are down days. Uh, it, the difference is like uh, 50.2 versus uh, 49.8. I mean, it is so so small that it's really insignificant. So it's basically a coin flip of whether you want to, uh, the market's going to be uh, up or down. Now, remember that the market has a tendency to run in strings. It'll go up three days, four days, five days, some days, seven, 18 days. You know, I think the biggest is 22 days, if I'm not mistaken, is something close to that. But, you know, realistically, if it's anywhere from one to eight days, you have some pretty strong statistics. Uh, after three days, the probability of the market going down is about 70%. After four days, it's 75%. Five days, it's 80%. And days six, seven, and eight, it's about 90%. But if you go up after that, then you're going to be looking at, uh, you know, something a lot more uh, sinister. We just made new lows in gold going down quite a bit below the 61% retracement now, folks, which tells us that this gold trade is probably not going to work today. And well, it certainly has it for me because I took my $2 loss and got out of there. So we'll actually $3 loss and we'll see, uh, you know, what happened with it. So we'll, we'll just go go from that level and uh, see what uh, see what happens. So anyway, that's what we're looking at right now. We, uh, we don't have a, a whole lot uh, happening right now. The stocks, have, you know, they're still re really near the high. We came off about 50, 50 Dow points off the high so far, but it's still, you know, relatively early to see uh, if that's going uh, to be the case. And we'll we'll see what's uh, see what's going on um, going on with uh, with that. The next level of support in that um, in the gold would be down to the 786, which is down around uh, 1610. And uh, the way I like to handle that, you know, I was looking to be a buyer at, uh, you know, 1919 with a $3 stop. And uh, they took that out. I probably should have risked a little bit more, but I, I don't like to uh, risk any more than that on some of these things because it's a, you're able to, uh, you know, control your risk pretty good in this market because it's so very, very big. So we'll see, you know, how, how things are how things are going uh, at the time. Uh, we've had a lot of discussion um, in the den with, about Martin Armstrong uh, from Armstrong Economics, one of the smartest guys in the business, folks. He is flat, uh, one brilliant fellow. He spent six or seven years in prison because he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't uh, buckle under to the government. They finally, you know, let him out, and he's back in business, so to speak. But uh, he's a real brilliant fellow. I mean, uh, I met him in 1988, uh, and I think I told the story about that. But he is really one of the smarter dudes. Uh, in the business. He does a great deal of uh, things with numbers, and uh, I know he's a very strong uh, believer in the numbers of uh, sacred geometry and stuff, and he's a really smart fellow. So, And, well, he's looking for something a little negative, but, you know, whether that's going to happen or not, we'll have to wait and see. It's still still relatively early, so we'll watch that to, to see what's going on uh, with that. Uh, we had a couple questions about the uh, grain markets. Uh, the uh, soybean market and the wheat market and the coin markets have had little rallies. Uh, that's basically, you know, what we're what we're looking at in here. I don't think anything really significant has happened yet, but uh, we certainly keep an eye on that. Next week we're going to have uh, our friend Rich Anderson from Anderson. Um, um, uh, capital management on and he'll certainly uh, you know help us uh, you know look at some of these grains and the cattle market has just been uh, decimated here uh, we should have made a bottom down there at that 134 level and it's already dropped more than five cents uh, below so some of these commodities are still 
you know, uh, heading into the toilet. So uh, you've got to be uh, very careful of that. Okay, we'll be right back after these words. This is Larry Pesavento for John Logan. We'll wrap up the show in just a few minutes. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Okay, folks, uh, this is Larry Pesavento finishing up for John Logan, who we hope will be back um, 
uh, on Monday. Uh, we'll see what's happening. I'm probably not going to be here tomorrow, folks. I've got to uh, travel, and um, it's going to be right during the time uh, of the show, so there's not much uh, uh, I can do about it. I have to let TFNN know, which I hope they're listening right now, but uh, I am going to have to be uh, uh, unable tomorrow uh, to be on the show. Friday should be uh, no problem, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll catch up with you there. So we'll see what's going on and uh, with these things, and we'll, we'll see what's uh, what's really happening now the um, main thing I think keep an eye on the bond market folks because uh, if the bond market gets above this 158.20 level which is a full handle from where it is right now then you'll be looking at uh, you know some really interesting uh, things that will be going on and we'll see uh, what really happens it's um, it's really interesting, you know, because when we, we see these markets uh, react like they do, they're just doing the normal technical things that they always do. They always have a reason for why they think things are going to go up or down or whichever direction they think they're going to go. But frankly, they're doing nothing different than they've always done. We make these A, B, C, D patterns, and then we rally, and that's, you know, pretty much what we're, what we're looking at. I'm still of the firm believer that we're going to be making a lower low here come uh, October 6th, which is a, uh, a week from Wednesday, I believe, and we'll see, you know, what happens, uh, you know, to the market uh, uh, at that time. But uh, tomorrow will be uh, the first day of the month, which that's really a revelation, isn't it? Anyway, uh, remember that the last two days of the month and the first three days of the month, which takes us through all of uh, this week, uh, tells us that, uh, that it's a positive, slightly positive bias. But that didn't work last month. So it's only a bias. That's really uh, that's really just all all what it is. So we'll just have to take a look and see what's uh, see what's going to happen with some of these things as we as we move through this cycle that we're in right now. But we are in a major bear market, folks. There's no um, any way you look at this. This is bearish. I mean, uh, it's just flat out bearish. You just have to look at it. And but we're going to have to see the numbers setting there, and we'll we'll see what happens. Remember, 1918 is the number we could be looking at in the uh, S and P. Uh, if we get up there in the next few days, that would be a spot where you want to start looking at it. That would be the equivalent of that rally back from uh, 2015 that we had uh, after the Fed uh, spoke on the 17th of uh, September when we had the uh, Mercury uh, retrograde uh, at that time. So uh, we'll also have uh, we'll have Norm um, Winsky on next week to update us on some of the things he's been watching with because he's been able to give us some really good information of overbought and oversold conditions along with some of the astro timing uh, that he has. So all of that will, will fit together uh, pretty nicely. And we'll have John Logan back just as soon as possible. My guess is uh, he should be back by Monday is what they're saying. Uh, I won't be here tomorrow, as I mentioned, because I've got to travel. I'm going to the big city and uh, see some old friends and stuff. So I will not be around uh, Thursday uh, at all, but Friday, of course, uh, I certainly, uh, I certainly will be. We'll, we'll go from that level. Anyway, um, I think that's just about the end of the show coming up here pretty soon, and we'll have Tom O'Brien coming on for a little wrap up of what's going on, and then right after that, I will be in for my regular show. I think that's about it. That's what the old clock on the wall is telling me anyway, so we'll see. I live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his 
subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.